Hi, my name is Moses and this is Fundamental Art Christianity. We are still in chapter 6 and we are moving forward. We are moving toward modern time. So I talked about Middle Ages, I talked about Reformation, but I want to move forward. We want to pass the Reformation and go to early modern time and modern time and see what reformation, what reformist we can find in this area of Christianity. Today I'm going to talk about Philip Spinner, Philip Jacob Spinner. His middle name was Jacob. Philip Spinner lived between 1635 and 1705. He was a father of Pietism, German theologian and preacher. He saw a spiritual deadliness in the churches and proposed a small group Bible studies, evangelism, uh, kindness, importance of a devotional life. So, I'm going to explain all of this. It's just a summary of what he did. Wow. I start with, as usual, with two quotes from him. What is impossible for man remains possible for God. When you see the miracle of God, you cannot help it. You say, wow. So, it's one of the quotes from him. What is impossible for man remains possible for God. And second one is, let us not abandon hope before we have set our hands to the task. So, if somebody discouraged you, don't listen to him. Actually, yeah, I was talking uh, about this. I remember something I feel like I have to tell this to you. I was watching a video on Facebook. There was an old man. He was an author. So, uh, he was talking to a group of young people. He was speaking of his experience and what young people should do. He said, I have a manager. He has a manager, he has a publisher. And one time his publisher told him that you should write a superhero a story. He said, I thought to myself, okay, I will write. I don't want to lose my job. He came up with the idea of Spider-Man. When he presented the idea of Spider-Man to his manager, and publisher, agent, whatever you can call it. He said, first of all, Superman is not a teenager, cannot be a teenager. Second of all, Superman cannot have personal issues. And who likes Spider-Man? People are afraid of a spider. So he said, okay, you don't want it? So, okay. Then he get an opportunity to put a story on the magazine. They wanted to close a publication, a magazine, business. They wanted to close it. It was the last number of that magazine. So he said, nothing gonna happen. 
we can put a cover story on the magazine and it is the last number so if it's not good so it doesn't matter because we don't have any more magazine that we should be worried about that so they put the story of spider-man on the cover of the magazine and then everybody liked it after a while publisher called him and said oh people like the idea of a spirit a spider-man you should write a series of this and he continued that if you think genuinely an idea is good don't let an idiot talk you out of this and I'm telling you my experience I don't let any idiot tell me what should I do what should I not to do because I'm led by Holy Spirit and I'm genuinely filled with Holy Spirit okay let's go on When a Spinner appointed as a pastor in Frankfurt, in Germany, he couldn't find anything left from the reformation of Martin Luther. Martin Luther fought hard to destroy Catholic Church method system, but after a while there was nothing left from reformation. He said, he lamented without having quickly to cast down again the shame and distress. Unfortunately, the people and churches there, I guess they were not in uh, a spiritual awakening. I can say that. I can put, put it in this word that they were spiritually dead. So, That severe judgment came in an otherwise hopeful book. Thirty years of war which caused the death of one in four Germans caused Spencer to spend his life pastoring people still recovering from war between Christians. So, he was desperate to do something because the church is there and was dead. And there was war against Christian. All of them was fighting against each other. He tried to pastoring people until the rest of his life. Thanks to a modest but powerful program of reform, Espener would eventually rank just behind Luther in German religious history. The first one in German history is Martin Luther and the second one is Espener. Spener would eventually rank just behind Luther in German religious history, the founding father of movement commonly known as the Second Reformation. That was so high that they call it Second Reformation. Why Spener founded no new denomination? It wasn't like Martin Luther that every Protestant denomination came out of Martin Luther Reformation but it didn't found any new denomination but somehow they name his revival as, as Pietism. He didn't want to 
not make a new de denomination, but Pietism is named after uh, Spinner. Because his influence would stretch far in space. Everywhere from South Asia to North America and even today time, even today some evangelic movement inspired by Spinner. He completed his doctorate and in the same day he married Susanna Earhart. Because I'm going forward chronologically and I'm in life event of a spinner when he completed studies he got his doctorate degree he got married with Susanna Earhart. A lawyer encouraged Spinner to begin hosting a small Bible study group every Sunday and Wednesday evening. Fifteen to twenty men met Spencer. It was like a staff meeting and midweek, no, Sunday evening and Wednesday midweek. So it's like that. But this to our ears the story sounds unremarkable doesn't every church have a small Bible group duh but Spencer's reform were pastoral practical and easily adaptable however radical at the time although yes Today, most of the churches have Bible study, but it was radical at the time and they don't really have a fellowship. Just, they just want to gather and tell a lie to each other. That's how Bible study works. Spinner believed that church and society would yet experience better time, concluding set of six brief practical reforms, began by rehashing two ideas from Martin Luther. Spencer was influenced by Martin Luther so much. He was living in the same country and not so much far away from that city. So Spencer sought to revive Luther's model of the church as a common priesthood. He said not just ordained clergy but all believers are made priests by their Savior, are anointed by the Holy Spirit, and are dedicated to perform a spiritual priestly acts. I believe in what he said. So, that was a second reformation that the ordained pastor cannot hold the these things that they think that they are only anointed they don't think that they shouldn't think that every single believer are anointed by God and they should led by Holy Spirit if they are not because they don't spend time by reading the Bible, by praying in the private, they are repeating the things over and over. They pray as a duty, like Muslims. 
they read the Bible just as a storybook, as I was reading before I believe. And they don't spend time in the presence of the God. So, think for a moment about what I'm saying to you through this service. Because soon I will close this chapter. I'm going forward to chapter 7 and I'm talking about different things. Peace of God be with you all.